Good evening and welcome to another edition of DXB Today, your essential viewing uh, to get an idea of what's going on in this extraordinary city of Dubai. Loads to look forward to as we take a deep dive into all things recycling and sustainability. Yeah, I know, a couple of buzzwords out there at the moment. How, do we, how much do we fully understand them and just how responsible are we? Lots to get into with some special guests. Let's see what's coming up. Ash gets ready to check out the elite sprudel bottling system at the Zabil House Jumeirah, helping to replace single-use plastic bottles. And Maitha heads down to Dubai Fintech Summit, the biggest of its kind in the region, to meet global leaders and explore innovations. Plus, to round us off tonight, we've got talented singer Daniel Aranda joining us in the studio live. Lots there for to look forward to. But the big talking point today is all things recycling, all things sustainability. Yet yeah, we know that last year was the year of sustainability. We know that's been rolled over into this year as well. Yeah, I know we use the phrase a lot, but just how much do we take it to heart? And how responsible are we when it comes to all things recycling? Let's point some fingers now to dear friends and colleagues. Ladies first, <laughs> Dina, uh, are you I, better these days? I am better. I feel like we're doing quite a few things in the house. We're recycling more. We all carry around our water bottles, but I definitely feel like it's not enough. And I feel like there's a lot of mixed messaging out there. So today I am, th the goal of this episode is to, uh, you know, ask about the myths, dispel some myths, uh, get, some, get some real answers, some updates, what's good, what's hot, what's not and in the recycling world. That's and both point, point fingers. fingers yes. Right? yes. You know. Well, do you know what? I point fingers. I went to a, a big hotel organisation. I'm not going to name who it was, uh, but I was I was pretty taken back by the amount of plastic bottles that they had still, um, and I was I was like, wow, why are they still doing this? So the whole use of uh, the single use plastics that we're, we're dispelling, I really I'm down with that. Whoa, 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 whoa. You've just completely dodged the question. We're asking about you, you know. You can't just shift it to hotel chains. If you go to my bag right now, there will be a glass bottle in there and I am on it. I've been on it for a long time now. So yes, I'm, 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 I'm down with that. Look, look at the, the pastel green. You've got the green as well. Like we've, we've got the memo. We're going green. Recycling, we're going green. Well, you know what? I think that you're going to be surprised by some of the information that comes out of today's episode. Because is glass better than plastic? Well, we'll find out. And we've got two experts on the show today well they could not not one but two guest co-hosts today and they couldn't be better suited for the show let's find out who they are hello i'm daniel hi i'm Josh, and we are the founders of free we really look forward to seeing you shortly dan and Jas will join us in the studio right here in just a bit but first as hotels in the ue get ready to ditch single-use plastic about time and for a more sustainable offering our Ash headed down to the Zabil House Jamira to try out their reusable glass bottles. Let's have a look. Zabil House is saying goodbye to single-use plastic water bottles and are serving water in reusable glass bottles. It is the first Jumeirah property to have an in-house water filtration called Sprudel Closed Loop Bottling System. Sean, being the founder of Sprudel, I want to know a little bit more about what it is. If you could explain it to us in plain, simple words. Uh, we're here to save the planet. I mean, our slogan is the Planet Friendly Water Company. Uh, we've been going 10 years, so March 2024 is our 10th anniversary. Um, and that's all. We're about eliminating single-use plastics in okay. restaurants, hotels, offices. So Sprudel is a water filtration system? So we have water filtration systems, high capacity systems for the hotels, like Zabil House. Uh, but we started off in the corporate world where we offered drinking water systems, which basically take Dewa water, filter it, and you can then serve still or sparkling water for the, for the, for the client. Do you think this uh, system would, I guess, in a few years be available for residential use? Yeah, I mean, it is already available out there. It's not something we do personally, so we're more B2B because we can get a lot more traction for, with, with corporate clients. Um, but it's definitely out there and it's something that's being embraced wider now more than ever. Marcus, thank you so much for joining me. You're welcome. Um, I believe the Zabil House is the first Jumeirah property to have this brutal uh, bottling system. What, what made you want to take this up? I think we were in conversations with Sprudel even uh, pre-COVID. Yeah. 
So we are very eager to address the current overusage of plastic bottles, specifically within the hotel, but actually also across the company as well. Uh, so we got into conversations with Sprudel and Sprudel being a, a local business, uh, an SME, we wanted to support them and work with them, but also the professionalism of, of the company and also the passion and engagement from Sean to make a, a difference on the environment was something that really caught us. And we thought, how could we best integrate their offering and their products uh, to best serve the needs of the hotel, but also to make sure that we're being as sustainable as possible. And do you think um, the use of this bottling system will move on to the other Jumeirah properties as well? Yeah, so the good news is uh, we're the sole company within Jumeirah working with Sprudel, uh, but the rest of Jumeirah has actually also rolled out a filtered water program as well. Um, I think uh, we're averaging uh, saving around uh, 9 million plastic bottles a year across wow. the Jumeirah state just within the UAE. And specifically uh, by using Sprudel here within the hotel, we're saving on average around 150 plastic bottles. So we're not just reducing the use of single-use plastics, but we're also, uh, I guess, reducing the carbon footprint that comes with the movement and transportation of bottled water. Zabil House's collaboration with Sprudel is taking their sustainability initiative to the next level by creating a culture of conscious living and creating an eco-friendly environment. to all the team down there at Zabil House for what is a great initiative. Hopefully other hotels will follow. Okay, now our guest co-hosts today, two of them, uh, our co-founders on a mission to build the best waste inside platform anywhere in the region, helping establish a proper circular economy by increasing recycling awareness amongst all. Please welcome to DXB today, Daniel Ashcroft and Jessica Ran Singh from Ri. Uh, Dan, Jess, great to have you both with us. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, thank you. Listen, um, we're going to find out more about Ri. We're going to ask you to grill our other guests as well. But let's just start with the basics. I mean, you guys take a very international perspective. This is an international problem. You know, a lot of us will be sat here in Dubai and go, OK, is this just a Dubai problem? Is this a UAA problem? No, it's a global problem. So how well set are we here in terms of mindset, in terms of infrastructure, to recycle compared to other parts of the world? Um, see, um, I like the old hospital pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> I know he's just itching to answer that sort of question. <laughs> so, so look, UAE is a, is a, is a young country right, when it comes to infrastructure. Right? So comparing it to other countries, I think that's a bit unfair, where um, if you go back to the UK or Canada or France, anywhere, they have bins in place, they have the infrastructure, the habits are there. What about the mindset, Jess? Is the mindset, is, is it, are we more open to change? Are we, all, are we more open to recycling here than maybe other parts of the world? It's, it's improving. I mean, that's, that's, that's all we can do. I mean, the issue, again, is a multicultural population, right? There's so many different, uh, people from India have a different way of thinking about waste. And that's, that's something that they're trying to solve on a consistent basis. It's there, I think. Yeah. Over the last, you saw last year uh, with COP28 as well, the, the, the amount of people that actually came out in support for this, that's, that's testament to how good Dubai UAE is in terms of moving to this, right? So the, it's there. Is it, is it where we want to, you know, where it's supposed to be? That's the question that you can ask, right? Um, and that's something that we, with other recycling enthusiasts, if that's the word you want to use, or waste enthusiasts, not just recycling, um, strive to be, right? Yeah. That's where we want to get, get to, okay. uh, where it's just bang, yeah, this is where it goes, this is what we do. Cool, awesome. Okay, Dan, your turn to be put on the spot. Now, I know you guys, Re offers a service where people can recycle through you. I wanna learn a little bit about that. And most importantly, I wanna know, you got a little demonstration set up over here. How do we recycle properly in the UAE? Because every time I go from country to country, the rules change, so. Yeah, it's, yours. it's always very difficult when you have lots of people coming from different countries. They have different knowledge and they have different expectations. Um, but what we do at Re, we try and make it as easy as possible for them, but also educate them to teach them how to do things better. Um, and a lot of that is understanding the material that goes into the bins. So I'm going to put you guys on the spot okay. and ask you questions <laughs> about the material <laughs> that we've got in this bag. So uh, those are the Re bags that you distribute to your clients? These are one of our Re bags um, on them. They have QR codes and this allows us to track every individual bag and to log the, the material that has been put in it. So it's like your luggage at airport, as it goes through, it gets scanned and we're able to follow it and understand what's in there. Except that you get judged. 
Well, <laughs> held, you can judge held, held, held accountable. Held accountable, held accountable, held accountable yeah, yeah, yeah. for what you've packed into. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you learn from your mistakes, and that's okay. the best way of teaching people. Okay, so we've got a few different things in here. Um, simplest one, I'm hoping that all of you guys will know, is this. Indeed. Uh, what is it? That is a plastic bottle. I want to know what happens to that, how it gets recycled. But what you would normally do is take the cap off, and the cap doesn't get recycled, but the bottle does. No, no, so that's, no, 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 that's... Beep! See, that's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there you go. No, that's not true. The uh, bottle... There are three aspects to your bottle. The packaging outside as well, like the branding of it. Um, that's different material. This is different. This is PET. This is XDP, which is harder plastic, right? Number two, this gets recycled as well. This is great for recycling, right? Uh, this is amazing for recycling. Um, so this is, if I if I start answering what happens to the plastic bottle, I don't think I have enough time for this. So I, I'm going to just put you on the spot first. Right, see if uh, it goes in the bin or not. But initially, when you mentioned the cap, it is better to keep it on. It's not because of separation of material. It's more the contamination of what might be inside of this. Okay. So quite often, people might not finish their drinks. If they take the top off, put it in, that might contaminate the rest. Okay, so that goes in. But this is PET. It's a different type of plastic, so it's a pet bottle. And you can identify it from the little triangle and the words at the bottom. Mm. But without the label? Without, uh, well, the label can go on. Can um, go in. That's something that is done further down the line, is the labels and the caps are separated. Now we also have uh, this. Lynn looks really distressed that he got the answer wrong. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> so this one, I'll pass it around. So if you look at the bottom, go on, Dan. can you identify, not yet? I'd say not those. recyclable. Well, this one. Let's see. That is because that's got the 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 the, the triangle with the squirrely thing in it. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, can you identify, okay, can identify you... which type of plastic it is? I've got my glasses on. So. <laughs> it says PET on here, so I'm assuming if that was recyclable, yeah. so is this. So it's the same with the take back my plastic bottle. Answer. And now, <laughs> whack it in then. What about this one? That. Why? Dirty. <laughs> well, that's not too bad. But what about the material <laughs> that it's made from? Can we uh, see the bottom? I haven't got glasses, so. Should pass it on this way as well. It says PLA. Exactly. Oh. So, although it looks the same as PET, this is actually PLA, which is a plant based material. And so, this doesn't go into plastic recycling because it has to be managed differently. Okay. So, although they look very similar, you have to be aware of what there is. Uh, but we make it easier, and we're the ones that identify this and will separate it at the free facility. So, you say it's plant based, so is that, is that a good thing? <sighs> um, it's a difficult question. <laughs> Um, it's not like it disintegrates or anything. Justin just might be able to say this a bit so, more diplomatically. So, so it's not it, it's not just plant based, right? It's PLA is a alternative to plastic that was bought out because um, uh, for some reason, for some reason, we've made plastic the enemy of 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 the planet when it's realistically waste. Um, but but because we're focusing on plastic, I'm going to do this. A, a PLA is a starch based alternative, right? Uh, it needs a different way of managing it. Um, but because a lot of infrastructure in a lot of places don't actually have the methods of managing this, so it possibly could end up in a, in a landfill, right? So this is where the tricky part of recycling comes in. But yeah, the easier one would be if it's pet, done it goes. PLA, separate bin, not in the recycling bin. Okay, cool. Okay, quickly. We're gonna head over to break quickly, so if you could quickly show us a couple more. Yeah, the last comments. one. Uh, so this, it's some food packaging. Okay. What material can you identify quickly here? Uh, cardboard and plastic. Yes. Do you recycle them together? No. No. So the problem is both recyclable and they're both made of recyclable material, but unfortunately, as it currently stands, it wouldn't necessarily be recycled. So from our part, we'd try and separate it, but it's always easier at source if it's separated. So if you were to take a bit of time and separate the plastic from the cardboard, and then the cardboard goes in your cardboard recycling, the plastic goes into the plastic. So you send different bags for different materials? So we try and have the segregation done at home, and then the segregation is then put into the bag individually. So you'll have your aluminium, you'll have your metal, and you'll have your plastic all within one oh, bag. Yeah, so the one, this is more of a collection bag rather than, because we don't want you to be using 50 bags, right? Uh, because it, it's impossible to keep this in the house. Uh, so we give you bins as well, which obviously you can see, you can get these bins, you can get the bags. The aim here is to collect in separate bags. But asking for a friend, yeah. Obviously asking for a friend, yeah, yeah. only for a friend. Yeah. But if, if, if my friend didn't have enough time or was lazy and just didn't, uh, wasn't going to separate, does someone else separate down the, further down the line or not? 
So there are options to separate, so that's what we do at the facility because we have to separate the plastic. But it helps if some of it, if it's been done at it all. It saves a lot more time. Uh, it saves energy as well. Um, you, you are making sure it actually gets in the right stream yeah. rather than just hoping it gets in the right stream. Um, where you put it in a bin and you're like, oh, my job's done. That's not how it works. I will you, tell my friend. <laughs> yes, yes. If, if, if your friend wants a personal note, it can reach out to me as well. Done. All right, well, gentlemen, thank you so much. Stay right there because you're going to be guest hosting with us all episode and we need your input. Uh, coming up, we are discovering how cutting edge solutions are helping produce quality assured recycled plastics here in the UAE with the founder of Rebound Plastic. Don't you go anywhere.